Wisdom also means substance, truth, and function. The experience of substance, truth, and function becomes clear. Hong on. That's wisdom. As your experience, your awareness, your, your uh, Buddha once talked about, maybe a, a lot more than once, uh, but I remember he would say things like that I've read, um, enlightenment and the knowledge of enlightenment. So it's like the experience of substance and the knowledge of experiencing substance. That's why it's important to have a teacher because you can decide, hey, I got it, and then go around and go around, and uh, maybe you don't. Uh, but a good teacher can see it and hit you. You know, Just like a friend may see something you're doing and that you think you're fine on, and they may say to you, you know, you weren't very nice to that guy. And you're like, really? If, especially if you trust your friend, you might, really? Yeah, you did this and that. It helps. It helps you. Uh, but wisdom comes as and the experience of substance, truth, and function become more clear for us inside, not intellectually. That's not important. That, you, when you need the words, they'll come out if the experience is are becoming clear and thinking about it, oh I got a clear experience of that that's already the wrong way but what do we mean by those words okay uh, substance before thinking not dependent on thinking uh, truth is simply like a mirror reflecting and I can see why Zen Master Sung San talks about this. Because in Tang Dynasty, in Majo's lineage, they talked a little differently. They talked about essence and function, substance and function. They didn't talk about what we call truth very much because I think people automatically experienced it. But we have so much thinking now we cannot just reflect what's in front of us. So you know, if you remember, probably when you were a kid, maybe four or five, you go outside and it's like, the sky's so blue. Or the tree, the wind, one day the wind moving through the tree hits you. Or for me, one thing is the, the smell of a pavement when there's a warm rain before. You can smell, there's a certain smell of the pavement uh, that you walk on or the street that comes up. Uh, these are very vivid experiences. When we're kids, our senses are more ex vivid because they just reflect without thinking. Probably that function of this body-mind is being increasingly dulled by, you know, these things and the computer, <laughs> you know, because uh, um, because um, <laughs> so truth just means when your body mind naturally reflects. Do you realize my experiences and do you realize that I, I believe the first thing the eye experiences is color then your brain turns it into, oh, this is a computer, that's a camera, oh, back there, there's a wall. But it's color. The ear is some just sound, but so quickly we think something about it. The nose, smell, but so quickly our mind moves. Often we're not aware of it. Why do people wear perfume or cologne? Because when I walk by somebody, I can change their feeling. <laughs> and if they're not aware of it, you know, if you've got the right scent on, you walk by and they'll follow you <laughs> into marriage <laughs> and children <laughs> or the temple, <laughs> you know, if they like the smell of incense. <laughs> Taste. Wow, look at yourself and tell you, I don't want that food, I want that food, you know, <laughs> what we do it ourselves. 
So we can't just experience, just purely experience and reflect. But if you practice that kind of uh, ability of our body, it comes back, starts to come back and can really come back if we uh, make an effort. Zen Master Sung San said that when he was uh, doing a hundred day uh, chanting retreat on the mountain behind Magoksa Temple. And it's a, it's a ways, it, I don't know, three kilometers, five kilometers, uh, you have to walk down this back road and then go up this mountain. And he was in a cabin, of course it was around 1948 maybe or 47 or something, and I think 47, 48, that winter. And um, countryside, and of course all this electronic stuff wasn't around, a little bit, radios and things, when he was growing up. And of course he did very extreme physical practice and very strong focus of his mind. But he said he could smell when they were make, uh, making, uh, cooking with denjang, in the kitchen in Magoksa, five kilometers away, you know, and uh, you know, I have to get this right under my nose to smell it. Which brings me to a short uh, break. <laughs> this is Bengal spice tea. It's very good. It's, it's uh, non-caffeine. And I discovered that it was created by tigers in India before humans had left Africa and gone to India. So this is a very ancient drink that originally tigers made. They'd sleep during the day and when they'd wake up, they didn't want caffeine. They wanted something spicy to help their senses wake up for the hunt. They made this. And the reason they made this is goats in Ethiopia hadn't yet invented coffee. So uh, we're getting the benefits of tigers in India, goats in, in Ethiopia, and uh, the natural world. So appreciate it when you drink Bengal spice tea. Buddha called himself the Tathagata. Uh, which means the one who comes thus, you know, the one who, I don't, I was trying to think, how do you, can you talk about this thus, thusness and suchness, these Buddhist terms, it just sort of means the way things are. So in relation to Kongan practice, we talk about four kinds of thus, the way things are. We say, like this, uh, in the English words, I think it's a translation maybe in Korean of Jin Yo or something like this. Like this. First, this is for to comb your intellectual hair. First, without like this. This is our original substance we call primary point before thinking universal substance, our substance, the universal substance. Everything in the universe is made out of the substance. It's before thinking, so it's before speech, before words, before anything. So without, nothing you can do at that point expresses it correctly other than That name is, that's express, one expression of universal substance called without like this. No characteristic at all. Then the second one is become one like this. That's called demonstrating universal substance. Because something's happening, but what's happening is all universal substance. And the substance is in adding or subtracting. It's not doing anything, but it, I don't, it's very hard to talk about, but it's just forms come and go. So, and the substance itself is without name and form, not dependent on name and form, speech or words or thought, but we can demonstrate it. Become one like this, open your mouth, already mistake. 
So our school hit the table. Lin Chi in China, ha! Duck San took his stick and hit people. Guji raised one finger. You're demonstrating. You can see that without a single thought. You see it and then thinking very quickly often. You know, Buddha picked up a flower right away. All these people are thinking, what's that mean? Why do you do that? When's he going to teach? But Ma Kashiva understood. Mind to mind, already touch. So he smiled. That's why Ma Kashiva became the first Zen patriarch after uh, Buddha. So uh, this is called uh, become one like this, demonstrating this universal substance. So you're not even hindered by motionlessness. The substance is not dependent on motion, not motion, silence, speech, but open your mouth, mistake. As soon as you use conceptual thought, you are uh, misleading, okay? Third kind, only like this. This is what we were calling truth. If you have that mind for a moment, there's no inside, no outside, no subject, no object. Everything's become one. So what, is, what does this body mind do? It just reflects like a mirror. When you look at the ceiling in here, it's white. When you look at the sky daytime, it's blue. If a cloud's floating by, ah, white cloud or gray cloud. When you hear the dog, in America, dogs go woof woof, but in Korea, I can hear they go mong mong. So it's just sound, just sound. Sugar in your mouth, sweet. That is like a mirror. Your body mind is just becoming one with and reflecting. Name is only like this. It's just like this. It's only like this, okay? One more step, just like this. That means 100% correct situation, correct relationship, correct function. So function. Is this a cup or not? Silence. We're expressing the same substance. Is this a cup or not? Become one like this. That sound substance, this substance is the same substance. Is this a cup or not? Ah, the cup's holding some tea. That's only like this, just reflect. Just like this, one more step. You and the cup, what is the correct re situation, relationship, function, okay? So four kinds of thusness. That is the nature of the universe. Then in our school, we make one more distinction. Subject just like this, object just like this. Subject just like this means uh, what's my correct situation, function, and relationship in relation to me? I'm hungry, I eat. Object just like this is what is my relation, correct situation, function, and relationship in relation to somebody else, to an object outside, to something else, you know, something else. Somebody's hungry, give them food. So we make that very clear distinction. That's helping our consciousness and our wisdom become meticulous. You know, somebody's hungry, you're also hungry. Well, you're not hungry, you just ate. Okay, so object just like this, subject to like different. If we begin to function like that, then we say our wisdom's very big, okay? So maybe one day that will, that little intellectual discussion uh, will help you just realize there are different ways to, uh, that thusness appears in the universe. And as we take away our uh, opposites thinking, just like the tree, we do it. You know? And when we make mistakes, then we just return to don't know. And then one day, we can do it just like the tree. You know? A little bit more and then uh, see if there's questions. Two essential things in Zen practice. Try mind. Nobody else can try for you. Even if Buddha comes, he can't try for you. 
very simple uh, way to relate to that isn't like, oh, I should get up. No, I don't want to get up. Oh, I should get up. I don't want to get up. No. Then you're in a fight with yourself. Just this. Human beings really only have one choice in life. Moment to moment, I can or I cannot. If you think I can, you can. If you think I cannot, you cannot. So don't go big and wide, you know. I, I want to eat 10 million, I'm free, I want to eat 10 million uh, donuts. Try, see what happens, you know. <laughs> then your mind will get clear very quickly. Won't take that long. <laughs> you get clear quickly, okay. <laughs> then you don't need to try anymore because you have no doubt about it. You know? So, uh, try mine is only us, you know. And then pretty clear uh, without thinking, you know, instead of laying in bed fighting with yourself, can I get up? And then it becomes clear really quickly. Maybe you really can't. Maybe you had a stroke. Maybe you're paralyzed. Okay, that's clear. And correct direction. What is correct direction in Buddhism and human life? We say human beings' original job is understand our true nature, understand my true nature, and help. Don't know why that is, but in Buddhist teaching, human beings can raise that question. What am I? Human beings can look back at ourselves. Asura in that realm, they're too busy being jealous and angry. You know, they have power. And you, you can kind of see this among the human population, even. You know, the, the Asura mind. They love politics <laughs> and sometimes business, you know. So they don't think so much about who am I until they run into problems. Heaven, everything's too comfortable. So you don't raise a question. Animals, we know. You look at animals sometimes, a little bit. Actually, usually with dogs, they're more checking out our emotion. They're not thinking back of, about themselves. Maybe some animal like a dolphin or an elephant or maybe one of the high chimps or uh, uh, apes, maybe they have some sense of reflection. Don't know. Some of them seem to have some understanding about a death. But the realm of uh, animal, it's very simple but narrow. So it cannot, uh, it, it rarely can an animal raise a, a self-reflection on itself. Hungry ghost, too hungry. Suffering from hunger, so cannot raise, don't raise a question. And hell realm, too much suffering. So uh, this human realm is very precious because it's not too much suffering, it's not too much wonderful. We still can raise this question. So don't waste the, our time, don't waste your time. Because uh, when it's gone, we don't know what we're coming back as. Uh, but if we try and are sincere and try, 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 then uh, come back as a human and continue your great work. Or if you get big enlightenment, you choose. You know, there's stories of Zen masters coming back as a horse to uh, help free his country and uh, lots of things like that. I thought one time, oh, we need oxygen. If I get, maybe I'll come back as a tree. I'll make oxygen. And then I thought if I really have Dharma power, I can be a forest, you know. But uh, I don't know. I don't think about that too much now. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Any kind of question? Um, sky's blue and the leaves are falling off the trees. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. And we will be having winter kielce. Um, November 29th we start. Uh, but we're not able, unfortunately, to accept people from outside the temple. So we'll be doing the retreat with the current 17 residents. It's 14 monks and nuns and three uh, lay hangja. Um, but we are having an, a heart kilche, we call it heart kilche, 
that actually maybe just today they posted the information on the website where uh, someone would uh, make a commitment themselves, something they choose to do as extra practice every day for the 90 days at home. And uh, uh, so read about that and see if you're interested. And of course, teachers will try to meet with you uh, through the um, uh, through Zoom uh, during that retreat time to uh, give you support. So. Next question. Don't check enlightenment. When the light turns red, stop. When the light turns green, take a good look and go. Name is a, a red and green light enlightenment. Now don't check your mind. Oh, did I get enlightenment? Oh, maybe that's enlightenment. No, that's thinking. That's thinking. <laughs> All of that is thinking. So don't check yourself. Just make your practice strong, which means right now, what am I doing? Do it. Okay. Come back to just now. What is my action now? What am I supposed to do now? Do it. But in, in our school, whether you get, an, get enlightenment or not, isn't most important. What is enlightenment's function? Become clear and use that to make a correct life. If you have that, that's your effort. Even if you don't get enlightenment, your life will improve and your wisdom will grow and your satisfaction will also grow. Next question. Don't waste your time thinking about that stuff. If you care about people in Africa, two ways. Either practice hard right now in the situation you're in, that's also helping them, or join some uh, organization that goes to Africa and helps people in some way you wanna support, feeding them or medical care or things like that. But you being in a good situation, thinking about that is called checking. Then, if you really indulge in that, maybe you'll be born in that situation next time. Because here, you've already met Buddhist teaching, but you're not practicing. You're checking, checking, checking. So, no problem, you know. Take that checking mind, recognize it as checking, and every time it appears, put your mind into practice. If you do mantra, immediately do mantra. And then, your dharma light and your wisdom will grow, and your action will help others already, even if you don't directly go to Africa. So somebody asked Buddha one time, if sentient beings are numberless, how can we save them all? Then Buddha said, I've already saved all beings. So recognize your own situation. You're, you're in the presence of Buddha's teaching, but you're spending time checking. Don't check others. Your heart's not bad, you're concerned for them. Rather than thinking about what kind of karma did they make and blah, 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 as soon as those thoughts appear, bring your attention to practice right now. Other, otherwise, you're wasting your time here. Maybe they're better off and they're getting enlightenment in a bad situation. Look what Nelson Mandela did after 20 some years in prison. Okay. Yeah, good heart, but don't waste your time running around. Take your love mind for others and put it into practice right now in the situation you're in. Next. Zero.
Do you have one for me? If you make a number, then you'll never finish the kongans. Actually, how can you finish? The universe is infinite in time and space. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I didn't even finish your, the kongan you asked me either. Oops, now I finish. Next question. Everything you do expresses your belief in the universe. If you're spending a lot of time being nervous and stressed, you believe life is nervous and stressful. You are the leader uh, who is spreading your message out to the people that you bump into on the street. Do you have a more specific <laughs> question? Because you have to realize, we have to realize that what I'm expressing is what I believe, even if it's not what I want to believe or think I believe. So take care of your true nature. Then at least it'll be expressing something good. You know, I grew up with uh, uh, don't follow leaders, watch your parking meters, Bob Dylan. Don't depend on leaders, become clear yourself. Then. Good ones you can help, and the wrong ones you uh, uh, leave alone. Go around, do something else. If you don't like a leader, become president yourself. But most important is uh, uh, take care of your, your mind. Don't spend a lot of time checking other people. Now, if you're in some leadership position and are asking specific advice, uh, there's a great teaching from uh, the old samurai. It says, if you want loyal retainers, if you want the loyal people under you, uh, you must love and help them. But don't check your leaders. <laughs> maybe they're good, maybe they're not good, doesn't matter. You become clear and bright, and that is what will benefit you. And you can use that to help others. Any more questions? How to use a uh, sabotage yourself? Look at that. Any more questions? Seventh consciousness is discriminating consciousness, emotional consciousness. I like this, I don't like this. This is good, this is bad. This is right, this is wrong. This kind of discriminating judgment mind. Uh, eighth consciousness is memory. It's where everything's stored in our hard drive and supposedly we carry it from life to life. So if you have some strong memories in there, even if you're not aware of them, they function in your life. So Mozart and uh, seventh consciousness begins to appear around one and two years old. And eighth consciousness starts to appear around three and four years old. So somebody like Mozart, who must have had very strong music con uh, in his eighth consciousness, music ability, when he's three and four, he suddenly can do it very well. I heard he could hear a tune and copy it on the piano. That's from uh, some very strong... Uh, something holding in the eighth consciousness. But Zen practice means perceive that all these consciousnesses originally are empty and then bring them all together to one point, just now, okay? The ceiling's white. The computer screen is uh, reflecting many colors. You know? When you're thirsty, have a drink. If somebody's thirsty, give them a drink give them something to drink. Then your eight consciousnesses aren't controlling you. Your true nature can control them.
your true self controls them. You control your karma, not your karma controls you. Somebody also wrote on here, if our true nature is already clear, then what commits the mistake of thinking? What was it that asked that question? You said what? What was it that asked that question? That's the one that commits the mistake of thinking. <laughs> Find that and then <laughs> you don't need to commit the mistake of thinking anymore. <laughs> Ask yourself, who, who asked that question? <laughs> Find that person and then uh, you found the one who <laughs> commits the mistake of thinking. <laughs> Any more questions? That one. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah, I probably, who are you? <laughs> I'm always wondering about that when somebody's coming near me, you know. It was particularly fun when I was with my mother. Who are you anyway? <laughs> Who are you and why are you always trying to tell me what to do? <laughs> and I, I also have that question when I look in the mirror. <laughs> okay, you said there was another one, another question. Well, you also have a small mind. That's why you got angry at him. <laughs> Your mind and his mind are the same. <laughs> you know, if you can take care of the other person, then at the right moment, when they trust you and believe in you, you can hit them too. But otherwise, they'll never believe you. <laughs> The people we check were exactly like the people we check. <laughs> so when you check somebody, be aware, you're looking at it yourself. Otherwise, you wouldn't even pay attention to it, you know, or it wouldn't bother you. You, you might just think, ah, they like being a boss. That's all. Uh, I didn't say view. I said subject just like this, object just like this. It's not a view. If you have a view, you, you'll always make a mistake. You'll get angry when somebody tells you to move your car. It's just, it's very simple. A baby's crying. The mother comes in and she becomes one with the baby. She also feels the baby's pain. She lays down on the floor crying. Is that right? Is that gonna help? So what is her correct action to the baby? Name is object just like this. Don't get attached to the names. Just understand there's different kinds of correct function. Some relate to you, some relate to what do you need to do for others. That's all. And one reason maybe Sung San Si makes a comment about that and talks about it is because I visited many Japanese Zen masters and they have a little different style. You know, it's always become one. But in some situations, like with a baby, you know, you're crying, I'm crying, then I'm sad, I'm crying. But in some situations, one more step is necessary, not simply become one, reflect. One more step. Some energy into the situation is necessary. That's called a bodhisattva way. You know. Also, you can call it object just like this. It's just to show you there can be a little distinction. But if those words don't help you, throw them out. But it's not about view, 
if you're thinking, well, I'm the subject here, they're the object, or wait, am I the subject, or are they, or are they the subject? It's too late. Better throw those words out, because you already tripped on them. <laughs> That's great. That's like, I'm going to write the test answer, and then I'm going to check my... Uh, I'm going to write the test question, and then I'm going to answer it and check my answer to see if it's right. <laughs> it's a great idea. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> yeah, you can grab anything as a kongan, but you should really uh, visit a teacher. You won't. That's that's one of the the uh, benefits of uh, Zen tradition. You can't just declare yourself, oh, I got it. <laughs> you get checked by somebody, you know. It's like, see if it matches. It's kind of like falling in love with somebody and, and never, never telling them and just enjoying going around being in love with them. <laughs> and then you think you have a relationship. You can, you can grab your own kongan, but definitely you better have a, make a relationship with a teacher. Otherwise, you'll just decide you got enlightened and a few people will decide they, they uh, want to follow you. And then if you're, if you're not clear, that's called the blind leading the blind. And it's worse than just being blind yourself. But definitely, if you want some Kung to practice with, yeah, you can take your own. Hopefully, a good teacher will see where you're stuck and apply it there, apply a question there. But we don't hold Kung Ans. Your daily life is the kongan. So you don't need to hold a kongan. When you're in the interview room and you are asked, you see what you hit the floor and see what appears. That's all. After you leave the room, there's no need to think about it at all. Sometimes it comes up by itself. But correct kongan practice means Follow the correct situation, function, relationship, moment to moment. So our style is very connected to everyday life. One reason Kanwasan is having some, uh, there seems to be, it's, uh, I don't know. But in any case, uh, it's not so easy. Uh, when you're old, what I've noticed is you can do it because most of the issues of your life are finished career, family. Yeah, you're dealing with, uh, you're going to get die. If you want, the best way is have a relationship with a teacher and get a, if you want a Kung An and they feel it's appropriate, get a Kung An from them. Yeah, if there's something that's already driving you and has a question, but uh, you'll, you'll never know whether you got clear or not. Even if you get all excited, you know, that I got something then you can easily become a demon. You, you think you, you, you're really clear. It's really helpful to have other people uh, to run up against. And then it's pretty obvious you, you are or you're not. Uh, I see uh, Okay. Yeah. Oh, one person asked one thing. Do you have any Kung An for all of us as homework? I do. What are you going to do this winter about practice? Because all this talking is not for like a, a uh, like a intellectual class. You know, if I wanted that, I would just become a professor in a university. And that can be wonderful in that setting. It's all directed towards helping us practice. So this winter, make a plan, just like, uh, you know, the Kilches. Uh, what kind of practice am I going to try and do this winter? And your formal practice will help your daily life. Your daily life will help your formal practice. And if you get more, uh, a deeper sense of what that is, then there's not really a lot of separation between formal practice and daily life. 
It doesn't mean you stop formal practice. It just means you start to know what to do. You know, how to deal with this, what we call our mind. So that's my koan. What are you going to do this winter? Do something. Okay? Um, you can do the, the, the finishing up stuff now. But I want to thank everybody. Uh, I want to thank the moderator, uh, Hyunji uh, Bosa. I want to thank uh, the uh, technical uh, people, Bokjin Gosa especially, and uh, Ji Kwan Hangja here at Musangsa. I want to thank uh, yeah, Yu, Yu Yong uh, Gosa, who is uh, translating Hidden Out of You here in Korean. And so Yasinim, who actually is in Hong Kong now, is translating into Russian. And I'm trying to speak English. So anyway, thank you all. And uh, let's try and use anything we get from this uh, class to uh, do, do something that helps it become ours. You know, even the greatest intellectual understanding, if it doesn't become yours, it won't help your life. Okay, Zen Master Devon, thank you very much. Uh, as you can see on the chat room, there are so many what uh, thanking kind of notes. On behalf of all participants, I would like to express our sincere gratitude for your teaching. We know we are very lucky that we could learn from you. It's been a really precious and uh, good time for us all. Thank you very much. Sure, but I say in Korean, Kunsunim Tukbunim Nida, because, you know, I, I'm not original. I just uh, got a lot from Sung San Sunim and I want to share it because it's wonderful. So, thank you too. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to save them all. Delusions are endless. We vow to cut through them all. The teachings are infinite. We vow to learn them all. The Buddha way is inconceivable. We vow to attain it. And now as you leave, if you're interested in listening to old American rock and roll played on a kayagum, uh, I'll say goodbye by playing about four minutes of a song. You can leave or you can uh, uh, hang out with uh, some uh, sounds. Masters, uh, can, can we just to offer one sitting bow to you? The <laughs> 네, uh, 마음으로. 일베 일을 올리겠습니다. We offer one sitting bow to Zen Master Debong. 감사합니다. Thank you. 성부 합시다. Let's all become Buddha and help all beings. <웃음>